Hello, everyone. Uh, I am TC. I'm an earth scientist at the Pacific Northwest National Lab. Uh, previously, I finished my PhD from Yale, and I did a lot of work with Google Earth Engine, particularly focused on uh, urban heat as well as uh, using it for visualizing data and processing data. So I'm going to be giving some examples of sharing and visualizing your scientific data using Google Earth Engine with, uh, you know, I'll probably go through some of the web apps I have created and talk about some of the functionality. Um, so, I mean, I don't think I need to give an introduction to Google Earth Engine. Probably you have been here for a while, but it's a cloud computing platform for uh, a lot of spatially explicit data, such as, uh, you know, imagery, weather, satellites, and so on. I think right now it's around 70 petabytes, or maybe this was like three months back. Uh, so it's a lot of data that's available on the cloud for your analysis, which makes it much easier to do this kind of global analysis rather than you know, downloading everything into your own computer or into a super cluster, uh, super cluster and doing it yourself. So one of the first projects I worked on using Google Earth Engine, and this was actually for a course I took, which introduced me to Google Earth Engine back in 2016, actually. And what we did was we mapped the surface urban heat island intensity at a global scale. Uh, and this is kind of like an overview of the algorithm. I don't want to go too deep into it, but we basically had urban cluster boundary data, land cover data, which allows us to get like the, uh, the actual land cover information from spectral you know, reflectance at the surface. And then we basically created masks for urban pixels and non-urban pixels within each of these um, clusters. Then we uh, processed modus land surface temperature data and calculated the surface urban heat island. And after uh, doing this analysis, uh, it was actually my advisor who suggested, like, why don't you make a web application so that people can explore the data and uh, interact with it? And I had no idea how to do that. And I spent like maybe three months trying to understand backend stuff. And at that point, Earth Engine did have a way to create web, web applications, but you had to have like Google understanding of Google Cloud and all that. So while I was doing all that, Earth Engine released the ability to create web applications, and I was pretty happy about that. So this is kind of a uh, kind of just a screenshot of the of the web application. You can use the QR code to check it if you want, but it's not really optimized, I would say, for desktop. So I would you know switch your phone to desktop mode to check. But I, I'm gonna kind of just show you like some of the functionality we have in this data set, and all of this is like coded, uh, and I, I will share all the codes as well at the end of the talk. I have a GitHub repo for this. Uh, so basically, like you know, this just shows the global urban heat island intensity for all clusters, essentially, throughout the world. We, have, we had roughly 10,000 clusters based on the urban cluster data sets that we used. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see that here. By default, it's showing like the annual daytime values. But you can kind of switch this around and play, you know, you can get like the annual nighttime values, you know, summer daytime, summer nighttime, and so on. Uh, and uh, so this is just for just visualization. If you click on any of these clusters, you can also get, uh, not right. You can get the information about the urban heat island as well as, so it's basically automatically generating these charts from the data set. So for instance, it shows like the annual values for the whole cluster, as well as then the long-term, uh, you know, that the long-term changes in the annual daytime and annual nighttime surface urban heat island, as well as the seasonal variability of the same. Uh, here you can actually also export the yearly images. So you can, if you click this, it essentially creates like a zip file of all of the different layers for that particular cluster. However, I would generally suggest like downloading the data set or accessing it on Earth Engine because we made the data set uh, public through Google Earth Engine. So you can kind of, uh, yeah. Anyway, the, uh, another functionality we had was just looking at how urban areas have changed over time. Because that was something I had, I was really interested in. So this is like a slider, and you can uh, when you kind of slide to 2003, it should load the 2003 values. I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah. There you go. Uh, I, I like to show the example here for Shanghai because there's been such a huge growth. So this was 2003 uh, urban. So all of the values for urban heat island are, of course, only valid if you have an urban pixel. So it's just showing the urban pixels for 2003, and then you can uh, can you know go forward and see like how 
how much expansion that has happened in uh, in the surface uh, in in just urban areas and the urban uh, land cover data set here is based on the european space agency's climate change initiative land cover and it covers like 1992 uh, to 2020 um and up to i think at 300 meters yeah so that's one of the uh, apps i worked on and, and it, it's been very unbelievably popular really <laughs> so i think the paper that came with this uh, app actually made into like the most highly cited papers list from like the web of science this year so that's nice to see uh let go back you know Wait, that's not right. Okay, I think this is the one. And okay, so another thing I worked on after that was specifically looking at surface urban heat island intensity in the US. And the focus here was uh, making a surface urban heat island data available at the census tract level so that then we can combine that with socioeconomic data to understand potential disparities in heat exposure. So this again shows uh, an algorithm where we have an urban urbanized area data set from the US census as well as the census tracts themselves, which kind of overlay those. And here you can kind of see the surface urban heat island intensity for some uh, annual daytime uh, for all of the 497-ish urbanized areas in the US. And again, we created this app uh, where you can explore the data set, not just the surface urban heat island, but also like the socioeconomic data uh, corresponding to that. Uh, so, yeah, so again, we have like, you know, there's some similar functionality to the other one where you can kind of switch the layers and show like, you know, summer day if you want, for instance. And similarly, you can on this side, let me just zoom it a little bit. We show Chicago. Let me see. I'm not, uh, just realize I'm not. Oh, there you go. All right. So yeah, here here you can see like the surface urban heat island by census tracts in Chicago, and you can also see the socioeconomic data. Right now, it's showing the percentage of white population by each of the census tracts. And generally, you can uh, see like you know the lower percentage of white populations are those which have like uh, whiter, like lighter shades, and then the bluer shades are for higher percentage of white population. You can also kind of switch this to, uh, you know, other other races considered in the census tract data as well, uh, as well as, yeah, as well as like median income, for instance. Generally, you can see, and this is pretty consistent across across a lot of cities in the U.S that places where you have lower income populations and non-white populations tend to have higher surface urban heat island. And again, there are some functionalities here. Uh, you can kind of click on this and it will give you kind of a distribution of, let me see. Okay, there you go. So yeah, it's gonna give you the distribution of uh, the urban heat island values, as well as the median income for that census tract, as well as in the percentage of population by different races uh, from the census tract data. And finally, it's gonna generate a chart which shows the correlation between the uh, summer daytime surface urban heat island intensity and the, and the income. And generally what you will see is that across most cities, there is this negative correlation. So higher the median income of the census tract, the lower is the surface urban heat island intensity. So again, this this uh, the paper that came with this was published in Nature Communications last year, um, and and again uh, this code I have also made public, so you can kind of play around with it for something similar if you're working on some similar project. Uh, another project, let me. Uh, all right. So so the next project is very different from the other two, and this is more related to what what I was working on during my PhD, like. Uh, it, it, this creates a bias corrected data set for shortwave radiation and diffuse radiation. Uh, I use some machine learning algorithms to fix the data set in a global reanalysis uh, based on observations. 
So for instance, right now it's just uh, I can I can I can I can just click on this and show you. This is a very simple script. It just uh, kind of allows you to explore the long-term time series for uh, these different data sets. So if I can, can just click on any of these points, it's going to create a, a chart showing how this changed. Uh, this is uh, total shortwave radiation coming from the sun. How that changed from 1980 to 2019, um, and it's also going to divide that up into two components. That is the diffuse radiation, which is the amount of the shortwave radiation whose direction changes due to scattering by aerosols and clouds, and the other is the direct beam radiation. This is the radiation that just comes directly from the sun without any interactions with particles. Um, yeah, and again, you can kind of the same. I, I add this feature everywhere because I have the code for it. Um, yeah, so this is another one. Uh, I'm going to talk about one last one probably, and then maybe you can take questions. I don't know what. Uh, another study I worked on recently, this was done in collaboration with the Nature Conservancy. Where, so, I'll, okay, let's, let's do some background. So, there has been a lot of talk about more vegetation in urban areas because that a lot, that has a multiple co benefits as well as increased uh, heat mitigation capacities. Uh, but one question we had was how much uh, vegetation is actually possible in urban areas given that there is urban densification. There's not enough space, especially in poorer neighborhoods, to have vegetation if you want. So what we did was we actually uh, calculated the gap in tree cover between uh, highest uh, quartile and lowest quartile uh, you know, by income census block groups across cities in California. Uh, and then we kind of tried to find the space required to close this tree gap based on land cover data sets and one meter resolution um, urban vegetation data sets. And finally, uh, we also did something similar, but to close the surface urban heat island gap. Generally, you will find that there is not enough space, especially in the middle of the city, to fully close the gap because a lot of these census tracts are almost entirely built up. You have a bunch of them like filled with parking lots where there's no space for uh, urban uh, you know, vegetation. Uh, anyway, so we also created an app for this. I didn't make this app. This was one of my co-authors. But basically, it allows you to just explore the data set. Like, there's a bunch of variables. Uh, and this data set is also available on the GitHub repo, which is linked through the app. So it should, you know, shows like current tree cover uh, for, uh, let's see, let's go somewhere. All right. So let's see. So this shows like current tree cover, for instance, for this city. And you can kind of switch that around to show current urban heat island, the surface urban heat island. Um, yeah, and, and, and kind of so on. And of course, here you can see like lower urban heat island towards the coast, which is usually like the effect of the sea breeze. And that's pretty well known. Uh, so yeah, that's another app. Uh, there are a bunch of others I have, which I worked on as well. Um, but I'm going to also give you some kind of examples of these. There are a lot of other apps from other groups which are really good and have a lot of more functionality as well. And some of these are actually available on Earth Engine. So if you go to the code editor, So if you go to the code editor, there are some uh, scripts available for a lot of these apps. Oh, I think, uh, let me see. I have to expand one of the folders to get this. Oh, there you go. The Population Explorer app. So, uh, so for instance, this one, I, I really like this app because it, it basically allows you to like look at population distributions around the globe. And you can kind of click on them, and it will basically generate a chart for total population by country. And you can keep adding a few of these charts. I, I don't remember exactly how many you can add till it starts replacing but a, a bunch of them. And it will, it's basically going to calculate that. Uh, yeah, see, you can uh, compare populations. Uh, and, and all of this is already available uh, through 
do the code editor like you know, some of these uh, scripts so uh, for the scripts i talked about today like apps i actually have made all of them public on github it's not well commented just letting you know i might update it in the future but i did put them up there if you want to play around with it uh, yeah thank you and let me know if you have any questions